Okay, so as we all know, the UK enjoys regulations from manned aircraft systems, be they small or be they large. And one of the things the regulations require of you is that you get qualified um, resource UAS, or resource group, uh, an organization that can provide that training. So, Craig, can you lead us through how that works? Yeah, basically, we, we provide training for our past units under 20 kilos, so small and mount. It's three-point attack, I suppose. We start off with, with web-based training, and we treat every person that comes to us, regardless of experience, as if they've had no experience whatsoever. That way you know that you have the same consistency throughout. Web-based training gives you your principles, your basic understandings of meteorology, principles of flight, and what makes an art pass unit, I suppose. Then we have a theoretical ground or theory based ground school course. Three days where individuals will look at flight safety, air, air law, um, human factors, and also what's everything that's needed about the operations manual. And then the all important flight, flight assessment comes at the end. Once all that's ticked and corrected, then we submit to the CAA to get our individual students permissions to fly. So what you're saying is yeah, I can go from zero to hero, so you do the whole process because yep. you so, so myself as a, a I, I would need some form of licensing and then my business uh, in order to operate also needs a license and you'd help us through that uh, yes. I mean, through the whole process. Yeah, I mean it's the individual business itself, that's what the operations manual is, it's your statement of intent for want of a better term and it's what you, what you plan on doing, what security checks, what platform you're using, everything it's, it's your entire business in a book. Um, and then individual pilots as well can have individual flight assessments based on platforms, experiences. Moving forward from then, what we then do is then offer the ability to be able to help pilots and, and maintain a certain level of airworthiness, competency as well. And then also reassessment 12 months on the line when it comes to reapplying for your permissions again. So behind you there's a multi-rotor, is that most of the work? A fixed wing rotary? Where, what, what are people flying? I think it's a case of horses for courses, in all honesty. We're seeing, we're seeing a kind of equal balance between the two depending on what they're using it for. People who are looking at surveying and mapping it tend to be looking at fixed wing. However, your photographers, the people who are doing sort of building surveys, tend to be using multi rotors. And they are ranging from purpose built, ones that have been specifically built for them, I suppose, um, to a handful of well known individual platforms as well. So, can you, can you run us through this one? What is this thing? This is the Hoogan. Hoogan? Bless you. The Hoogan. <laughs> the X1. Um, this is it's a perfectly sealed unit. So the benefit of this is that we're not restricted according to weather. Okay. We can take it up in rain, sleet, snow, wind. Um, you can even land it in a lake and then take it out and fly it again. We wouldn't recommend that, but you can do. Um, in this particular case, deal camera, so infrared sensors as well as HD quality camera. This is used mainly for I suppose ins inspection projects um, are part of our I suppose, service delivery element with regards to inspections. Well, on the other hand, you have things like the fixed wing that is probably used for more, as I say, mapping or in or surveying. So if I came along to you and got qualified on this machine, could I then fly any multi-rotor? Currently, the way that we would recommend it is that if you're, if you're qualified and have a flight assessment on this particular machine, then obviously any variation of that, so it's not just that one, but other Hoogans. We would always recommend any time you move to a different platform, you have another flight assessment. Okay. It's not like a car. Is it a requirement or a recommendation? It's a recommendation. Okay. It's a recommendation. The difference basically is it's not like a car, brake, accelerator, steering wheel. Each one will have its own nuances. Each one will have its own restrictions with regards to the elements whether that be humidity, whether that be wind. Um, and because of that, it's always a case, let's, let's make sure that you're completely safe in knowing how to operate it, how to deliver the, the platform safely in an emergency procedure, loss of GPS link or whatever it may be. And, and how much is this going to cost me? If I wanted to learn, no, not the machine, no, no. if I wanted to learn to fly. And, and, and where would it happen? We have ground schools uh, throughout the country. So the idea is web-based training at your convenience and then a ground school, whether that be in Edinburgh, Belfast, Newcastle, Manchester, Cumbran, Worcester, Bournemouth, Newmarket, with others to come as well. Uh, the cost of the entire course 
from beginning all the way through to end would be £1,500. Okay. And including that, one of the services that we offer is that we give you advice, guidance and support in preparing of your operations manual because at the end of the day, that's the wording, that's the actual that's going to give you, along with your certificate of competency, your permissions to fly. And is there uh, then a, an annual uh, currency requirement, checks, flights or anything? There's a lot of changes coming into place with regards to currencies and with regards to airworthiness. Currently, we, the way that we recommend it is that every year when you do reapply for permissions for aerial work, that you look at a flight, that is flight assessment. One thing that we want to look at is we want to make sure there's no skill fade. Okay. And also to make sure you haven't really picked up any kind of bad habits. <laughs> Sometimes repetition, you become, you kind of forget things. Yeah. And it can be a case of you go from initially what the risk can be from following step by step procedures. Six months down the line, just opening the case, popping it down, and away you go. And we want to make sure that isn't there. We want to make sure that that consistency stays throughout, whether it's two years down the line or ten years down the line. And um, are you able to tell me the sort of numbers or rough numbers of people? You've got 50 people through? 200. 200. 200. It stands at the moment. Okay. Um, obviously, that means in 12 months' time, give or take, we'll have 200 or more flight assessments to do and more to come. Yeah. We more or less fully booked until probably this side of. October. Wow, okay. And, and do you think it's an increasing. exponential growth or do you have a sense of how, how large the market might grow in the UK? I think the, the benefits, I suppose, but the strangest thing is with regards to the, there's no one use for these systems. There's everything from agriculture to surveying to fire and rescue to safety to filming. To, and because of that, there's always going to be a market out there. Mm. And I think that the market is only going to grow and grow. It will plateau, I think, but I think we're a long way off that, yeah. A sure. Long way off that, yeah. So, if I want to go online and find out more about this, where do I go? Go to the Resource Group website itself. Within that, within that, yeah, what would that URL be? Resourcegroup.co.uk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Resourcegroup.co.uk, <laughs> Resource but it, the jet noise in the background. Yeah. The background. And then, obviously, you'll not just see not just what we do there with regards to the unmanned systems, but the other services we offer, whether that be, as I say, whether that be service delivery, whether that be air traffic control, like the ones that are telling these planes that are flying overhead what to do, engineering, recruitment, everything that we do. And we're just a part of a bigger organization. Fantastic. Thanks very much for speaking to no, us, Greg. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you.